it's really gratifying to repair a book. And you feel like you've picked up this lost soul who's fallen, falling apart, and sometimes seems to be in great pain, and to carefully pull it back together, work with its elements. You know, there's high detail, demands, concentration, patience, organization, eye-hand coordination. But there is one aspect about it that does seem a bit more singular. It's just that sense of stillness. I guess what I mean is a mental kind of stillness that takes place when you're with the book during its repair. Because at that time, you're with nothing else. It's so uh, self-contained and all-inclusive. The damage to each book is so unique and individualized. And so without all of these distractions pulling at you, you do find yourself, your mind, becoming quite still and very quiet. I still enjoy this job, and it has become the perfect niche for me. When a lot of people come into the Mindri, the first thing they mention is, is how different the energy is here. This is such a throwback environment, Mindri, and uh, the technology here is, is just purely mechanical, There's no electronics, and it moves along, not at the speed of computers, it moves at the speed of a craft, and that, that must just exude from the walls. And I think there are those who believe it to, uh, to be something that will pass away and become obsolete. This piece of equipment is called the board shears, and it is used to cut through dense binders boards when you're creating covers for books. And there's nothing like it. They thought of everything when they made it. It was made in around the turn of the last century, 1900, and built to last. The blade has never been sharpened. It sharpens itself. 50 bucks, we bought this. And we hauled it back. And for the next three or four months, I came in early and cleaned it and repainted it and, and restored it. And now it's a museum piece and it works great. Well, I think what keeps this work interesting for me is is the, uh, the artistic side of it. Bookbinding is very different than painting and drawing. It takes years to reach that level of comfort. It took me years to reach that level of comfort. And now I've been here 26 years and I'm finally comfortable with every kind of damage and every kind of book that's sent to me. Uh, the book I'm working on is probably dating from the early 1900s. The earliest book that I worked on here was from the early 1800s. It happens all the time that a text block falls away from its case and it's just because books are made so poorly anymore as opposed to the good old days when they were made much better. It's a style of repair work that's often reserved for the academics, the repositories, the archives. 
And when you see it being done in the public library system, you should take note. It was a workshop specifically designed for Pacific Northwest libraries. King County Library System was the only public library system to be chosen and the rest were academic or research libraries in the one monastery. And I'm, to this day I'm still uh, using those same techniques from that workshop and that was 20 some years ago. Which goes to show you just how little this craft is affected by time and change. It's really wonderful. You know, I've gotten to the point where I really don't pay attention to the content of a book. I look at its binding, its damage, how it can be repaired, and, and I just don't think about the content. Japanese paper is a wonderful material made from the bark of trees, and most of it's still by hand. Yeah, I feel very, very much that I'm collaborating with this Japanese paper and, and it with me. I don't quite feel that I'm using a material as much as I am a, an entity, you know, something that, that is actually living and going to work with me in repairing this book. When I moisten Japanese paper and begin to manipulate it onto the book, folding it over and molding it, shaping it to what, how I need it to be, it's, it's, it's like this being who is truly uh, assisting me in the repair. And when you tear this paper and you see the, this frayed edge of fibrous wonder. You have immense respect for how it was made. The best kind of repair is that one whose appearance, after having been repaired, looks as if it never needed to be repaired to begin with. Unfortunately, it seldom happens that I achieve that, that kind of a repair. I can probably count on one hand <laughs> that when that happened. It can be very gratifying to repair a book, uh, it, especially a very worn and deteriorated book, and to bring it back to a, a truly usable condition again. It's like being a rehabilitator who finds some, some poor, fallen, a person in society and helps that person return to a steady self-sufficiency again. When the books are, are a child's book and I receive a note from, from them thanking me, it, it really is a special feeling. I mean, a child sometimes will, will care for a book and, and give value to a book as it does to a very dear friend. I often send these books back reluctantly only because I know, I know what they're going to be up against and it's a rough life for a book when it leaves Mindry. Yeah, I don't like to think of myself as being the, the last of a golden era of book repair. This, this craft definitely deserves to be maintained, preserved, and handed down. But I wish I had a young apprentice who was watching me every day. Whether or not I'll be able to pass it along is another matter entirely. In bands, which used to be sewn onto the spine at the head and tail to further reinforce it are now merely glued on as a decorative purpose. But, but they do say we care. But 
to use them is a, is a gesture that I think indicates on the bookbinder's part that that uh, they're still worth having. I was a quiet person before I came here, and I think I've only become more of a quiet person, which probably means more of a reflective person. Strangely enough, I certainly don't read as many books as I used to read when I came here. Your, your perceptive abilities seem to change and evolve and widen and become more tolerant, understanding, patient, compassionate towards people. Simply by working here where there are no people but only books as my clientele in a place which is primarily solitary and it will be very quiet in here with the books and yet those books have taught me something over the years in my relationship with people so I just find myself in a, in a wonderfully solitary spot what stillness will bring most anyone is a great sense of peace. There's not much more to say than that. that.